Thank you, folks. Welcome to the Film Fan Club Show. I'm Sam Carrico. Not to throw you off, but we've got a great show for you tonight in particular. Political commentator Ben Burgess is making his return to help us break down Civil War. Yes, the new A24 movie written and directed by Alex Garland. Personally, I thought it was a well-directed film, just not a very well-written one. So it makes perfect sense that Garland would announce that he's taken a hiatus from directing to focus on writing. Don't do that! I am excited to talk about Civil War, though, but I know what you're thinking. Sam, you sexy and hilarious behemoth of a man, why are you talking about a movie that came out two weeks ago? Well, I'll tell you, dear viewer, it's because the alternative was Challengers, and that movie sounds more triggering than Christy Noem at a dog show. Keep in mind, I've only seen the trailer, but from what I can gather, this new piece of shit, I mean film, is about Zendaya, who stars as a tennis player turned coach. She starts to train two competing male tennis players and begins sleeping with both of them, promising she'll end up with whoever wins the match. Now there's the obvious criticism. What if the coach was a man and the players were two hot young women? Oh my god, you couldn't make that movie today. And you shouldn't. It sounds horrible. But when the genders are flipped? You got more kids saying Yas Queen than at Drag Queen Story Hour. Finally, we have a movie about a female coach abusing her male athletes, hashtag girlboss. But what audience is really standing in this film? Leading people on? Zendaya, like it or not, has a large following of women in their late teens and 20s that will see this behavior as something to be admired or even replicated. There's also the larger issue of how the, the film industry is approaching gender roles. One of my favorite franchises is James Bond. Pierce Brosnan was the best. But since the character's inception, James Bond has always been portrayed as a womanizer. But now, the Daniel Craig films saw the character evolve, eventually putting aside his promiscuous ways and finding a partner, and even starting a family. That's what's being taught to young men today that look up to James Bond. Here, again based on the trailer, the Zendaya character treats sex and intimacy as something that's transactional, and, par and partners like their yesterday's TikTok challenge. What makes you think I want someone to be in love with me? Speaking of which, while we're comparing Zendaya in this movie to other male characters, there's one exchange from the trailer that really stood out to me. Hey, I love you. I know. Yeah, we all thought it. I love you. I know. Why is it okay when Han Solo says it to Leia, but not when Zendaya says it to what's-his-name? Well, I'm glad you asked, Mr. Strawman. Throughout Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back, Han Solo is trying to court Princess Leia because he wants to be in a relationship with her. He's, con he's convinced himself, too, that she likes him back and just won't admit it. I'm not going to go into his tactics there. But the point is that when Han Solo replies, I know, to Leia's I love you, it's a tongue-in-cheek way for Han to say, yeah, I was right, completing their romance arc. It's because he wants to be with her. When Zendaya says it, again, at least in the trailer, it comes across as a dismissive, yeah, I know, whatever, fuck off. Am I crazy for seeing a difference between these two things? Regardless of how you feel about Civil War or Challengers, I think it's important that we have these conversations about gender roles, relationships, and the messages that films are sending to audiences. But it doesn't mean that I have to pay my hard-earned money to see it and support it. Let's be honest, though. I'm really just mad that Zendaya won't sleep with me. All right, buckle up, folks, because I have a feeling this discussion is going to be as intense as a tennis match between two love rivals. Let's get right to it. All right, let's welcome tonight's guest. Ben Burgess is a Jacobin columnist, an adjunct philosophy press professor at Rutgers University, and the host of the YouTube show and podcast, Give Them an Argument. He's the author of several books, most recently, Christopher Hitchens, What He Got Right, How He Went Wrong, and Why He Still Matters. He previously came on our show to talk about the trial of the Chicago 7 in 2021, and we're happy to welcome back to the show, Ben Burgess. Hey, Ben. Hey, thanks for having me back. It's a pleasure to have you. And I, we were just talking about uh, beforehand, I thought that uh, Civil War was the perfect opportunity to have you uh, uh, come on because I, you know, it's a like, I'm just repeating what I said literally two seconds ago. But for those who didn't, <laughs> for those who didn't hear, I thought it was going to be politically charged. My big takeaway is that it wasn't very politically charged. I thought it said shockingly little. But uh, as we kind of go through our, you know, reactions to the yeah. movie, I just like to start with the trailers and kind of going into it. What were your expectations for Civil War? 
I'm not really sure that I had very strong expectations, which might have been why I may have liked the movie better than uh, some other like reviews I've seen in outlets where there, where I often agree with people. Uh, cause, cause I think that some people were coming into the movie with like a very specific idea of what they were going to get and then they didn't get it and they were annoyed. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and you know, and, and I think I came into the movie being like, Oh yeah, I saw a preview for that. I, I, I sort of have a vague idea, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, um, uh, I mean, to be completely honest, I, uh, I might or might not have gone around to seeing the movie if you hadn't asked me to do this, but I was, um, uh you know but it's like one of those things it's like yeah you see the preview like oh yeah that could be interesting right like um so you know there's so yeah i had sort of vaguely intended i'm probably seeing it at some point but i hadn't really put a lot of thought into it one way or the other yeah oh i was just sorry i was gonna ask if you've seen alex garland's previous work ex mach i've seen ex machina and uh i saw men but i I haven't seen uh, and a lot of people like annihilation okay um Annihilation, if I'm even remembering the right movie, uh, is uh, I I think I saw, but I'm I'm just gonna keep it a hundred here. This is not a commentary on the movie. This is just a commentary on like when I saw it. I think I fell asleep. <laughs> uh, so, um, but um, Ex Machina, I love. Like, right. I, I think that's a really good movie. Uh, this is like it's like somehow manages to be both like really exciting high concept science fiction and also basically a one act play yeah like there are like there are like three characters in that movie with speaking lines uh and it's like super compressed and it's no i I, anyway i could go on about all the things i like about ex machina but that'll probably take up the time we're gonna spend in civil war i I had high expectations knowing that this was alex garland i mean men i saw i did see men and it was you know whatever Yeah, Ex Machina is way better. Um, and, and and I guess what he said, I, I have a Variety article here, and just the blurb is Civil War director Alex Garland says, and this is about you know releasing this in uh, uh, our you know twenty twenty four is an election yeah. year, and uh, he, people have talked about divisive times, and there's a sp- particular yeah. date in January of twenty twenty one that comes to mind with some of the injury sure, sure. imagery with this movie. So what Civil War director Alex Garland says, I honestly don't know whether it's responsible or irresponsible to release a movie during the a turbulent election year quote but what i do think is that there's a converse or a counter to that which is what's the consequence of not saying things what's the consequence of silence of silencing oneself or silencing other people and and before i toss to you what i commented on this facebook post because i'm a contrarian i commented yeah. well he released the movie and said nothing so it's a coward's <laughs> way out um sure. a very yeah. broad question what is he saying with the film because i uh, yeah. people roasted me for that yeah uh well i think that when he says things like that he's doing a disservice to his own movie because i think there's a much better case that could be made for it than what's hinted at with statements like that or you know to be fair this is self-inflicted what's hinted at by a lot of the marketing for the movie right like yeah uh so um because a lot of the marketing, you know, which might have to some extent been out of his, you know, was surely out of his hands, but, you know, but he, but then again, he kind of did the same thing in that quote you just read. Right. right? Uh, like uh, much of the marketing sort of suggests that this is going to be a movie that's going to be relevant towards thinking about stuff like January 6th and, you know, the, uh, the sort of like, it's going to be very relevant to the politics of 2024. Right. right? And, um, and I think if you went into the movie with that in mind, I totally get how you come out of it thinking the movie said nothing. Cause I think the movie did basically say nothing about the politics of 2024. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I think now I think that that's actually kind of good that it was better uh, that it didn't because um, I think, uh, I think that the, I think that the movie was actually way more interesting than Alex Garland seems to be able to articulate and making his own case, uh, uh, you know, for it. uh, Because, because I don't really think it's about that. Right. Like, 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 okay. So like one of the things I remember seeing as a sort of early, uh, early controversy about the movie was there was part of the promotion. There was like the release of like the map 
right? Yes. The, uh, the, the Civil War map. And everybody roasted this, you know, the sort of absurdity of there being a California Texas alliance. And, you know, what is that? That doesn't make any sense, right? Right. And, exactly. Um, and it's like, well, maybe. If you think that this is a civil war that started for some reason that's related to 2024 red versus blue culture war stuff, then yeah, it's not, it, it doesn't make, make sense. But also, hot take, there is no scenario where 2024 red versus blue culture war stuff would lead to a civil war. That's not <laughs> going to happen, right? Yeah. Like a civil war wouldn't happen that way, right? Like it would have been a much dumber movie if it was like, you know, if it was like the, the, I don't know, it's like the, the, uh, if it was the MAGA versus, uh, you know, shit lib civil war, right. And they, right. they had a, uh, like, like, uh, that's, I, I, I think that that, I think that that would have, um, yeah, that would have been a much more painful experience, right. Uh, for all, for a variety of reasons, right. By one of them is that it just wouldn't have made any sense, right. Like this is not how civil wars, I think actually, actually start you know that they i i I don't think that they i don't think that you're going to get people who are willing to go through the sort of conditions that i actually think were pretty well dramatized in in the movie over over that stuff right it's not going to happen i guess what Uh, i was waiting waiting for was like okay yeah there's the absurd the 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 on its on its face kind of absurdity of of Texas and California being yeah. put together. So I was like, okay, well, when I watch the movie, they're going to give me an argument oh, gonna, for why it makes it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they just yeah. don't. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so to my mind, uh, part of what, something I actually liked about the movie that I get why some people didn't like, uh, but I actually thought made it stronger was that they, they didn't bother to fill you in on, on the backstory, right? Like it, it wasn't like, um, there were some there were some hints that I actually thought were mostly pretty artfully done, um, and there was actually I should also say because I'm you know before I kind of lay out what I thought was going on in the movie, I will say that there's like there is actually one line of dialogue that made it into the movie that does suggest exactly what Alex Garland just suggested in that interview where where uh, where she the uh, the the protagonist says. Um, um, every time I sent a picture home, I was saying, don't do this. Right. Like that, that, yeah. that does very much sound like the kind of thing he's saying in that interview. And I didn't like that. Right. Yeah. But, uh, that's, you know, it's like, Oh, we're going to be, we're going to get too divisive about like MSNBC and Fox news <laughs> before you know it, we're going to be doing a civil war. Right. Like, yeah. Uh, like that's just dumb. But, uh, but, but I think that, I think that uh, the, the hints that you get, about how it started are uh, basically in the conversation in the car where um, this is very irresponsible. I'm being a very bad podcast guest here because I didn't like write down all these people's names. Uh, but, no, you're good. Uh, I just, uh, there's the, you basically have the caricatures, the old, the old uh, female, the young female, the comic relief guy and the old guy. That's basically yeah, it. Right? Yeah. yeah. There we go. Yeah. So uh, they're in the car and old guy, is talking to comic relief guy. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and cause comic relief guy is going to, you know, well, thinks sort of right, uh, that he's going to interview the president. And, uh, and he's like, and you know, you sort of get the sense that, um, everybody knows that it's probably not going to happen, but it's like, you know, you, you sort of, you know, got to like, uh, you know, this is like such a weird, desperate situation Yeah, that, you know, that they're just like, they're going to like set themselves this little quest and who knows, maybe it will happen, but you know, uh, I think they know it's a long shot. He says, if I actually do get the interview, what it's going to be like, what's it going to be like? An old guy says um, that he says something like, you know, he's, he sort of starts joking around and doing these questions. You could ask the president and they're all questions that sort of hint at some of the circumstances under which this, this could have started which base and like honestly i think what's being hinted at does feel kind of real to me in terms of how actual revolutions and civil wars often actually start which is you know like i don't know a, a podcast i really like is uh mike duncan's revolutions podcast uh familiar with that he does like a it's it's over now but it lasted for like many years he okay like a, he did like a 
it was a history podcast. He did like a season about the French Revolution, a season about the Haitian Revolution, you know, stuff yeah. like that. And um, the sort of combination that's being hinted at in these questions, it's like, oh, do you, do you think you made some mistakes maybe during your third term? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, was and um, uh, was disbanding the FBI a good idea in retrospect? And how has your thinking evolved on ordering airstrikes against American citizens? Yeah. Uh, that's like, yeah, like what's being hinted at there, right? Again, I, I, I think it's actually a good choice not to, to spell it out because like anything that you did to spell it out, we'd have to start thinking about it. And then, like, once we started thinking about it, we'd we'd be like, yeah, I don't know if I'd buy it, right? Like, because this is, ultimately, it's like, thank God, very unlikely that the United States is going to have a civil war anytime soon, right? Like, that's just probably not going to happen. So, like, any sort of scenario where it did, it's like, it's it's always going to feel a little improbable. But, like, what's been, uh, what's been hinted at there is, I think, a combination of sort of authoritarianism and incompetence and sort of like being like just authoritarian enough to alienate everybody but also like but also like um not being ruthless when it would have helped you right that like is the kind of thing that's like look people who get overthrown in revolutions and civil wars this is often exactly the combination they do right you you basically one of the things i got out of this mike duncan series is that it's like, oh, yeah, like if you look at people like, I don't know, King Charles, right, the one who's executed by Cromwell or, you know, uh, or or Tsar Nicholas, you know, they have, uh, you know, 1970. It's like these are like some of the most amazingly incompetent uh, like rulers in like any countries anywhere. And yeah. they sort of have to be to get to the point where that would happen, right? You right, know? So right. It's like, like that sort of combination. Okay, so he's serving a illegal third term and killing american citizens but he also made a probably really pragmatically self-defeating decision at some point to disband the fbi right like this is this is like the kind of series of like cartoonishly stupid missteps that might actually land you in that situation so i sort of bought that but like yeah look i i I think that if you in any situation where you somehow had that level of state failure uh in the u.s which as i said is really hard to imagine which you know is a good thing because i think that you know i think like i think this sort of what the movie is portraying it's you know no fun whatsoever for anybody right like yeah uh, that's is is very hard to imagine but if it did happen like yeah i don't know i kind of buy the texas california alliance because it's like yeah you're not gonna like like i think in actual civil wars like especially ones that are more chaotic than the one we had in the 1860s. Yeah. Like you, uh, you get a lot of really weird fucking alliances that like sort of like six months before they happen, nobody would think they would ever happen under any circumstances. Like, like it, it's like, no, come on, that wouldn't happen. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like, there's a, in like the Roman civil war after the assassination of Julius Caesar, there's a, you know, like Caesar's nephew, Augustus is like, allied at some points with like some of the people who killed his uncle you know because like this is like weird shit happens in like sprawling chaotic civil wars and like that i i don't know i i kind of i kind of buy it i kind of like it and like i i think that my sort of basic take about what the movie was doing was it was sort of on the surface a like on like the top level it was a story about like being like a war photographer right yes. like they have a you know and and this is the like what that's like and 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 the way that you know like kind of what some of the thrills of that are but like also the way that like doing that might kind of eat out your soul uh over uh over time right you know that yeah um uh, that like that's like kind of what was going on at the top level but then like look maybe this is just me reading in you know, and God knows Alex Garland's attempts to like explain what he's doing with the movie. Don't support this and you know, all that. Right. But like, um, but I mean, what I got out of it was look, this is a story that is about what it would be like to have this happen here. Mm -hmm. Right. That this is like stuff that you read about in other countries. Right. You know, that like uh, what, 
what it would be like for it to happen here, right? That like in the Imperial core, right? Which, you know, to some extent is like what, like, I don't know, like alien invasion movies and zombie yeah. movies and all that stuff are like always doing, right? Like this is the, you know, I mean, like, H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds is to some extent a story about like, yeah, the like what what happens to other countries when Britain colonizes them, right? You know, what about what like try to imagine that happening to Britain or you know, the uh uh there's um you know, like yeah, but it's like in a more grounded way, it's like no no no, like what if like the exact thing that in fact American foreign policy routinely imposes on other countries around the world right what if that exact thing happened yeah. here that they have a and so it's a way of i i mean i think at its best right it breaks down our defenses it's a you know it's because it, because it's it's not you know because if if you do a story about like war photographers like american war photographers in you know a civil war in sub-saharan africa yeah i think that like we're kind of psychologically prepared for that right we're like oh yeah that's very sad but it's a know, great point right? You it know, takes it a level closer that that it's it's hard to imagine, I guess, without the the concept of this film. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's like no, no, no. It really forces it to be real to you in a different way because it's because it's it's about it's about the United States and um and you know and and I think that you know I think that in effect, even if this idea is nowhere in Alex Garland's mind, which probably <laughs> isn't right, I think that the I think that the effect is to have it be you know i i don't know man i i i think that there's like a i think that there's like a pretty stark like anti-interventionist kind of takeaway here which is like yeah this 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 thing that like this is a movie about what the united states you know did to iraq uh yeah. happening to the united states that uh there's this sort of this sort of thing that we're all very callous about that, like uh, that it's very hard for Americans to even conceptualize with any word that's harsher than mistake. Right. I it's get, like, oh yeah. I think, I think the invasion of Iraq was a mistake. You know, it's like we, uh, we lost our keys or something, right. You know, that they, uh, that uh, it's like, you know, it's like, no, they uh, like turning somebody's society, right. Where they live into a war zone is a unspeakable, unspeakably nightmarish thing to have happen to them and i think that having you know i think portraying that happening however however it came about right yeah uh portraying that happening to to the u.s really brings that home so yeah i guess i guess ultimately yeah ultimately i think i'm more of an apologist for this movie than a lot of people who i normally agree with well you make you what kind of clarified in my head it, it, as you were talking is it, it's a movie more about foreign policy the U united states foreign policy whereas i thought it was going to be more about uh, i don't know if it's domestic policy but domestic issues you know the election and 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 things like in red versus blue and things like that but really like you're talking about i'm seeing an allegory for like you're talking about uh, our our what we did in iraq and things like that 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 kind of adds a different level to it that i hadn't previously considered i thought that's i think that's really interesting yeah, and again, I'm not necessarily even claiming that like authorial intent or anything here, but I think that like that's the funniest part. I think that you think that like Alex Garland misses this all, and you're like, well, it accidententally has this great allegory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It might it might be a total accident, but I, I I do actually think there's like a there's 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 like a really interesting allegory there because like yeah, you're right. If you if if like what the movie is trying to do is to like comment on um on like political divisiveness in the u.s in 2024 right then it's not just that it didn't succeed in doing that it's that like at a certain point they decided not to yeah. right like that they uh because like they really seem to have decided not to like the, the movie is almost totally empty of any sort of even anything that looks like it's even intended as mm. as uh as being about that right because there's the like like what is there there's like a uh somebody there's the postcards home line which was dumb i didn't like that uh there's um there's a reference to something called the antifa massacre yes uh, were, the ago, that's... were the antifa the per per perpetrators or the victims we don't know because they don't tell us yeah exactly right so it's just a and again i i, I can kind of like 
I can kind of dig that, that like, they, they, you know, it's like, yeah, everybody in this world knows what she's talk, talking about, you know, what, you know, young woman is talking about when she says old woman, uh, older yeah. woman was, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, the, uh, uh, was, you know, did the famous photograph of the Antifa massacre. Uh, we don't need to know. And it's like, it's, it's sort of tantalizing. It's like the, um, it's like in the first Star Wars, the, uh, you know, you fought with my father in the Clone Wars. And it's like, eventually they told you what the clone wars was it was dumb as shit but like they have a uh, like they uh but like when that movie came out it was just like oh i don't i don't know what that is i don't need to know but it's like a it's just like a cool little tantalizing hint that there's this like broad rich universe out there you know on, yeah uh, yeah off screen and i think it kind of works on that level but yeah you don't even know if antifer the perpetrators the victims uh there's you know so there's that and then i think I actually managed to miss this when I watched it, but somebody on social media was quoting some line of dialogue apparently about Portland Maoist. Did yes, you know I can't remember the context, but I, I've seen the movie twice now, and because I okay. just was trying to keep an eye out for anything that told me about how this happened, because like it's a fine line of wanting it all spoon fed to me, but also yeah, yeah. I don't want that, but I also don't want to have to like write the movie for it. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like a weird mix, but yeah, I went back and I caught I caught that Portland Maoist, and and I didn't know if that meant that that the that the the, the entire pacific northwest and that that faction was was socialist or maoist or or if it was just a subsect i didn't know yeah i, I mean his so, so what was the context because like i said I, I somehow managed to zone out during that line of dialogue i only wrote quote unquote portland maoists i wish i had written the entire sentence but it was one of those yeah. things that yes yeah, it went by and i was just i caught the yeah, buzzword <laughs> yeah yeah because if it's like because if like literally the claim is that like Portland has been taken over by Maoists, that's pretty dumb. But uh, like you know, so definitely demerit to the movie if that's if that's how we were supposed to read that. But um, that's on okay. its face, that's how I took it. But I, again, yeah, yeah. I'm I I am reading this no, much no. into it. You know, <laughs> yeah, could be, could be right. In which case, yes, I will acknowledge that was a second very stupid line uh, in the uh, in the movie. I mean, I wonder if it's like. I wonder if that's like a character's like jokey exaggeration of something. Yeah, like that. yeah. It do, I don't remember it being like a because like Jesse Plemons character. I get the sense is like an ultra nationalist elite. Like I, I get the sense that he's a right wing gun nut kind of. And so yeah, yeah. It, it it wasn't a character like him that said it. So like if he had said it, I would have been like, oh yeah, he's just caricaturizing you know other people. But I can't, it was one of I, I could have swore it was one of the protagonists that said it. So then I'm like. Oh, Oh, you know, they, like maybe that's actually a thing. Again, cannot remember the context, but okay, yeah, one fair enough. one thing uh, that I kind of appreciate, like you're kind of touching on, is the the film did resist creating like a caricature of of Trump or whatever in the president. Ron mm -hmm. it, Ron Swanson, what's the guy's Nick Offerman plays the president, and the only okay. time I got a little bit of that is whenever he's practicing, and then it yeah. cuts <laughs> it cuts to him being like, many are saying it's the beg it's the best military invasion that's ever been seen, or something like that. The best military uh, action that's ever taken place and then it cuts to him like grinning evilly and i'm like okay maybe there's a tinge of like that's the only time i saw a parallel to the former yeah, president that's, that's like a you're right I, I didn't clock that when i watched it but you're totally right that is like a little hint of trump there like i mean i, I just kind of watched that i was like okay you know like besiege dude being same delusional baghdad bob stuff but yeah. like uh that's uh but you're right. I mean, that is that is definitely meant as a little nod towards Trump. That's how I took it. Um, no, uh, it I, I, I think that's right. Um, and we already touched on it a little bit, but uh, uh, the ch the focus of this film is entirely on journalists in the way that they encounter what's going on. They document the civil war, and you, and I I I I'm in my day job. I'm a TV news photographer, so I'm like hell yeah. But also, they're all still yeah. photographers, as if that's gonna. And then they're, they're not even not even local news. They're the failing New York Times and Reuters. You know, I'm like, ah, could they have chosen a little bit better? Was a still photographer for the for Reuters the best uh, avenue to to go this to go through whenever you're going to make the main characters journalists? Yeah, that's an interesting choice. Uh, it, it is actually one of the striking things about the movie that is like. I mean, I don't know. It's not like people don't still have. It's not like still photographers aren't still a thing and it doesn't seem like it's set very far in the future or it's ambiguous, you know, but like, um, but, but yeah, it did almost feel anachronistic that like 
for so much of this, these could have almost been like people covering World War II. Yeah. But like all they're doing is taking pictures and, you know, and, and sticking, you know, microphones in people's faces, you know, to like, it, it's not, um, like the mostly like there was like actually one scene and it jumped out at me because it was because it was like the only time in the movie that it happened that you actually saw somebody like um that you actually saw like a live video kind of like you know somebody being yeah. like, oh i'm here at the scene of right you know it's like yeah like right at the end right they have the the yeah. reporter yeah and i'm like that's whenever i was like where are the tv news crews where's my representation yeah it was actually probably a mistake to put it in because putting it in at the end made you realize how weird it does was that there wasn't any of it for the and you notice the movie. you notice they get all their intel from the tv news crews too they're the ones that tell them the president's still in there and i'm like yeah of course there it is they're taking our credit they're taking uh, it, it, I, I felt <laughs> so offended again as a tv news photographer yeah yeah but it's like because like yeah for the most part it is this kind of like you know world war ii level of technology where people are just you know taking still photographs and 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 recording you know like like you know have like tape recorders for interviews and stuff so yeah that's interesting i mean i i wonder if like part of the reason is just that having still photography like let them sort of focus on the visual craft of it in a way that it might have been a little bit harder to represent right if they were like editing yeah like they were like editing video footage yeah they did they don't show the process of putting together a package on avid or whatever they just yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Like that, I, that, that might have been too time consuming no i get that like, it's you could just also like, yeah. yeah perfect I did like that, that, that motif throughout the film where they cut away to show. And then you, young Kaylee Spaney, is, hers is black and white. And then older Kirsten Dunst, that's so older Kirsten Dunst. Hers is uh, 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 in color. So you can kind of differentiate yeah, between yeah, the two. Yeah, I liked yeah, that yeah. throughout the film. Yeah, no, I, I hear you loud and clear. Withered, half dead, Kirsten Dunst. Uh, it's, uh, no, I, I have, um... <laughs> yeah. We wish her well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so um so yeah it's uh and, well, and it's also like look on some level it might also just be like it's something that in 2024 like the process is like it's like just close enough to something everybody has done right that it's like it's it's like a little bit like uh the daniel craig casino royale makes it uh uh, Texas Hold'em poker rather than Baccarat because like nobody who's watching it knows how Baccarat works. Yeah, right. That they have a uh, that so it's like um, the uh, that you have. It's like look, everybody. That's like, fair. No, that makes sense. Their, they're just doing it with their phone, right? But everybody's had this sort of like, oh yeah, I, I took ten pictures. And I'm going to go through and find the one that works. You know, like uh, you know that looks the best. And so yeah. it's like, oh yeah, see, this is just like that, but like just a little bit more so. That's my only counter to my other point about uh, it feels a little antiquated or old timey. But then I, I, in my free time, I do shoot film photography for fun. So the fact that Kaylee Spaney's character was a film photographer, I was like, oh, that's cool. I do like that. I thought that was cool. really quickly. We are in the in the seven minutes sure. that we have left. Uh, I, at first, I thought the characters were a little our main four protagonists were a little bit hollow. But in my second watch through, I did a kind of, I kind of appreciated the um, role reversal of Kaylee Spaney and Kirsten Dunst because she mm -hmm. is naive. She's uh, optimist, optimistic, optimistic, uh, comic relief guy keeps holding her, guiding her throughout the film. And then by the end of the film, Kirsten Dunst is kind of taken. She's a little bit. More, I noticed the comic relief guy starts guiding her through it a little bit more, and it feels like they almost have a little bit of a like a role reversal there and of course it ends we're in spoilers now spoiler alert kaylee spaney takes the picture kind of coldly of kirsten dunst as she dies what did you think of their character arcs i i, I appreciated on more on my second watch yeah so that's interesting because yeah since, since we are doing the full-on spoilers it's it's very like when i was i mean i've only seen it the ones but when i was uh so there's this little progression of beats where earlier in the movie, um, Kaylee Spanner asks 
Kirsten Dunst, uh, like, because Kirsten Dunst says, oh, you know, like, you're probably going to die. You don't know what you're doing. Right. right? And, and she says, oh, if I did die, would you take the picture? Exactly. And, yeah. And she says, oh, you know, uh, or, or she just says, well, what do you think? And right? to that so point. I'm implying that she would. But right. there's the second beat when old guy dies. Yes. And then Kirsten Dunst does, does take uh does take the picture but then she like feels bad about it and she deletes it and when she was deleting it i didn't like it because i was like oh this is like a little too like um i don't know this is like a little bit too telegraphed or whatever like i i, I know it's like a little bit too obvious a beat at the Except end yeah i changed my mind at the end because it's yeah. like no they're setting up the contrast this is actually more way more interested than i thought it was because it's like the point is like yeah as Kirsten Dunst is like getting burnt out with this, like her, you know, humanity is reasserting itself and, and she's not quite willing to be as ruthless as she has to be. And, and so it's like, yeah, she won't do it, but uh, Kayla Spatter, as it turns out, will do it. Yeah. That was great. I, 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 I'm, I'm much more uh, uh, appreciative of their arc in the film. Cause again, I, for, I first left the film thinking, man, we had some hollow characters and now I, I maintain old guy and uh, comic relief guy are, are kind of hollow They They have, you know, comic relief guy is a little sad there for a little while and then old guy dies. But I really appreciated that, that arc that the two, the two female leads go on. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's all right. Like I, I think that the, I think comic relief guy who, uh, by the way, what was that accent supposed to be? Oh, I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, it was interesting. I, I'm also surprised that the uh, the sort of militia guys who, I guess, to be fair, right? So this is yeah, this is the scene that I've seen like memed the most. The you know uh, we're Americans, yeah, but right. we're kind of Americans, right? Uh, which is definitely one of the scenes in the movie that is the most readable is like having something to do with what people thought the movie was going to be about. Uh, which is know. why they marketed it that way <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 uh but um it's yeah because like it does yeah you do get very right-wing vibes and you know he uh he does seem to shoot the other two reporters in part because they're not americans uh yeah. or you know eh, but um this is so it is interesting that he didn't question <laughs> comic relief guys accents like you don't sound like too. an american i'm like could the other two have just lied and then been like yeah i'm from missouri like you know like, yeah, yeah yeah those dudes those guys i mean they weren't white but they didn't have accents yeah yeah <laughs> it's you know so yeah. like yeah they, they could have totally just lied whereas, it did yeah, feel my last yeah. complaint while i'm while i'm here is is yeah. they did feel like they had a bunch of level of situations and they'd set it up i'm like how are they going to get out of this and then they just do like when they're like look up on the roofs you know and all this and then that scene they just oh deus ex I don't know how to pronounce it. Deus ex machina, machina. Yeah. They just have the car come in and save them from Jesse, Jesse Plemons and get out of there. But yeah, I, get, I mean, it was yeah. it was supposed to be a little bit of like, oh, see, there's all this discussion about how he's too old, but you know, gosh, wouldn't you look at that, right? You know, he he, he saved the, the day. Rescue. Yeah. Um, and then you know gets shot in the process. So I don't know. Here uh, death. But, uh, but but yeah no I I think that the like I think yeah I think comic relief guy was basically fine I think he did you know he's not an interesting character but he did uh you know he he you know he's like I don't know I mean he's sort of somebody I bought you know he's you know like he was fun I liked him he made me laugh a couple times yeah old guy I think is a little bit more like okay this is like the you know this is this this one feels more like you just like opened up the big book of archetypes yeah and like pulled him out of it well i guess we have a minute and a half left so uh thank you so much for coming on ben i just want to get real quickly do you recommend people see the movie before it leaves theaters i actually do yeah okay and i say wait until uh it's on max because i think a24 has a deal with max so if you can watch it for without paying if you're already paying for a streaming service then yeah i would just wait um yeah, I've, I've got the i've got the thing at the 
Alamo draft house here. I have like the monthly thing. So it's, uh, it's and I have AMC. So like for me having the AMC, it was like, of course I'll see it at day one. But if I was paying yeah. my hard earned money, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. If you actually buy, they have to buy the ticket, maybe wait for max, but you know, if, uh, if you don't go see it, but Ben is the apologist. So, and I'm, and I may have been convinced to apologize just a little bit more. Ben Burgess. Right. Thank you so much for joining the show. It was a pleasure. All right. Thanks so much, Sam. All right, that's our show. I'd like to send a special thanks to Ben Burgess for joining us this week. Next week, Chris Burnham from the Tulsa Doctor Who Vooing Society is going to be here to talk about the 2023 Doctor Who specials. We're getting caught up just in time for Series 14. I'm Sam Carrico. I'll see you then.